This is the two-way ANOVA video on balance. This video is intended as a simple show and tell to illustrate why, if a covariate is unbalanced, it must be included in the model in order to avoid bias. We'll only be talking about bias. Considerations of precision will be ignored. The structure of the examples is illustrated in the slide. Intervention is the predictor of primary interest. The other variable plays the role of a covariate. If you like, you can think of the covariate as the presence or absence of a genetic biomarker. The interventions have in identical impacts on the outcome. Specifically, the outcome for the patients with the biomarker is 10, regardless of which intervention is used, and the outcome for patients without the biomarker is 20, also independent of intervention. In the first example of the balanced design, 25% of patients have the biomarker, and this 25% figure is the same in both groups. The yellow and red colors are intended to help remind you of this fact. The question of bias is more precisely stated as, if the analyst fails to include the genetic marker as a second predictor, instead compares the intervention groups directly, thus creating a one-way ANOVA instead of a two-way ANOVA, would the analyst obtain the correct point estimate of the impact of the intervention? Here we've assumed that the two interventions work identically, Thus, what we'd hope to see is that the mean outcome for the two intervention groups are identical. This is, in fact, what we observe. So we can say that a balanced design with 25% of patients having the biomarker leads to an unbiased estimate of the impact of the intervention. This slide illustrates the same argument now for 50% of patients having the biomarker. The estimate of the impact of the interventions remains unchanged. Note, however, that the means for both groups have changed from 12.5 to 15. I'll say more about this in a moment. This slide illustrates the same argument, now for 75% of patients having the biomarker. The estimate of the impact of the intervention remains unbiased. The group means are now 12.5. The conclusion of the exercise is, so long as the design is balanced, you need not, and if you decide not to include a covariate, you won't induce a bias. The unadjusted mean responses, however, will depend on the distribution of the covariate. Whether this is important or not depends upon the context of the analysis. If you want the unadjusted means to be representative, you could use simple random sampling, in which case the distribution of biomarker in your sample is expected to be similar to the distribution of the underlying population. If your study design is more complex, for example, suppose you've separately sampled from the biomarker positive and biomarker negative patients. You can reweight the results as illustrated on the slide. One reason that you might want to use a more complex stratified sampling design is that biomarker is uncommon and you're analyzing, interested in analyzing the patients with the biomarkers separately. In that case, oversampling the patients with the biomarker assures that you'll have sufficient numbers of those patients whereas the reweighting allows you to describe how the unadjusted results would look in a population as a whole. Going through the same exercise with an unbalanced design, failing to include the covariate in the model causes the unadjusted means of the outcome to become biased. In other words, it appears as if the outcome for the two interventions differs by five units. In fact, they don't differ at all. In conclusion, for an unbalanced design, it's necessary to include the covariating question in order to, bi to avoid bias. The degree of the bias depends upon the degree of imbalance, as illustrated in the next slide. Here the degree of imbalance is less than before, and also the magnitude of the bias is less than before. Without providing an absolutely precise definition of the confounder, in the example of unbalanced unbalanced designs, the biomarker is a confounder because it A is associated with the outcome, difference between 10 and 20, and B is unequally distributed among groups. Confounding is common in observational studies. You can fix the problem by including the covariate in your statistical model, assuming, of course, that the covariate has been measured. In practice, you usually don't need to bother unless both of the above relationships are at least moderately strong. In other words, this example isn't intended to imply that you should throw every possible covariate into your models. You shouldn't. This slide is intended to remind you that, in the language of the previous one, randomized trials are designed in order to eliminate confounding. Nothing that affects the outcome, whether measured or unmeasured, 
can cause a bias because of the randomization, but because of the balance that randomization causes. For observational studies, you can think of statistical control, that is, controlling for a variable by including it in the statistical model, as synthetically inducing bias. In the biomarker, including biomarker status as a covariate, thus creating a two-way ANOVA, would generate a correct and unbiased estimate of the impact of the intervention. Of course, this only works for covariates that have been measured.